So hernias are an abnormal protrusion of um, an organ uh, or the fascia of an organ through somewhere it shouldn't be. Um, the main ones that we're going to see in the exam are um, inguinal hernias, which come in two main flavors. Um, indirect, um, which comes through the deep ring, goes along the inguinal um, ligament, along the inguinal canal, out the superficial ring, and then enters into the scrotum. And these are uh, defined anatomically as being lateral to the epigastric artery and vein, and they're commoner in the, the young because they're, they're more congenital. Um, and basically, down the gubernaculum is where the scrotum will descend its way um, th through these rings, um, out from being an uh, abdominal organ into the testes. Um, and if this uh, tunica vagisalis, which goes alongside it, is remained slightly open, then you can have um, a hydrocele, which is when just uh, intra-abdominal fluid will track down into the testes. But if that tract is slightly larger, then you can end up getting uh, contents of bowel herniating through it. And that's why it can go into the scrotum, and that's why it's covered in uh, the, all three layers um, including the spermatic uh, fascia which covers the, the testes. So indirect, the, the clues will be that it's, it will be a younger person, it may be a child, uh, maybe a young adult, and the other clue will be that it will be in the scrotum. Um, and the lateral to the epigastric arteries is, is, is something that you will find at time of operation. Um, it's, clinically, it's very difficult to, um, to work that out. A direct is going to be someone an older man, the rough um, incidence is, is, is almost 27, 25 to 27% of men will end up having a hernia at some stage um, of their life to look forward to. Um, and this is, means it's direct, it goes directly through the transversalis fascia wall at a point of weakness. And the main point of weakness is in Hesselbach tri triangle, uh, which we'll come to later. So this will be medial to the epigastric. It will be uh, in an older person, it might be lit to do with anything that causes raised intra-abdominal pressure, heavy lifting, chronic cough, smokers uh, are more likely to get uh, direct hernia, and it won't be um, covered in any of the uh, fascia, the spermatic fascia, and it won't track into the testes because it doesn't follow the same path of the inguinal ligament. And then femoral, it's also a form of... Um, groin type hernia but obviously nothing to do with the uh, inguinal ligament and that's going to be below the inguinal ligament and inferior and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Um, it's more common in women and this is because they have uh, a more a, a larger um, pelvic inlet and also have a larger um, femoral canal which it goes down whereas men have very, very narrow um, femoral canal. So the whole point of this femoral space is, is basically the but the point of it is, is that the vessels that run up and down the leg, the femoral artery and vein, the femoral vein needs space um, because obviously when you're at high activity, the femoral vein will be uh, larger as blood will be going back and forth from the leg quicker. Um, so it's this potential space that gets um, unfortunately filled with um, a hernia if it goes through the uh, femoral canal. And it's more common in women, and because it's a, it's a smaller defect, it's more likely to obstruct, it's more likely to incarcerate. Um, and it has a, the lacunar ligament, which is one of the borders um, of the um, femoral canal, is very sharp, and that is where you'll get an incarcerated hernia. And then finally, a hiatus hernia is one that comes up commonly, and that's of the esophagus to the diaphragm. And there's two, they come in two types, a sliding or a rolling, and the sliding is the one uh, which is more common, which is labeled here as C. And what that means is that the uh, part of the distal esophagus has slid up through the diaphragm. The pink line represents the diaphragm. And the problem with this is that obviously the, the lower um, gastroesophageal sphincter uh, will lose its angle of hiss, which is needed to uh, stop reflux. And it means that reflux is common. Whereas um, a rolling hernia, the cardia, um, goes through the, um, the diaphrag diaphragmatic orifice at T10 uh, where the esophagus penetrates and it, the, you can see that the gastroesophageal sphincter um, 
the, the, the junction between the stomach and the esophagus is still beneath the level of the diaphragm and means that um, reflux is not as common in this. So C would be a sliding and D is known as a, a, a rolling or parasophageal hernia. So Hasselbeck's triangle, uh, the anatomical landmarks are the rectus abdominis, the lateral wall of that, which is where you're, if you're lucky enough to have a six pack, that's what it would represent. And then the inguinal ligament, which if you remember runs from the anterior superior leg spine to the pubic tubercle, is the ligament itself. It's not exactly huge, it's a couple centimeters long. And then the inferior epigastric vessels. So obviously, as we said previously, if it goes into this, um, triangle, it's a direct hernia, it goes to the transversal fascia, more common in old people, and by definition it would be medial to the inferior epigastric, just looking at this um, schematic diagram. And then the femoral triangle uh, has the inguinal ligament as a superior border, a ductor longus, which runs down the medial aspect of the leg, and sartorius, which runs from the acis down to the pes anterior anus on the knee, so it crosses uh, the leg. And then you can see that it's nerve artery vein, and then you put Y fronts, so you remember that that's where your underpants would be, so it goes from lateral to medial nerve artery vein. And this space by the vein is the femoral um, canal, um, which is where, unfortunately, things can, a femoral, a femoral hernia can penetrate through the femoral ring and um, get stuck here and become obstructed. And as I said, that's more common in uh, women uh, than men, and it's, and it's more common to um, obstruct and it needs a, a surgical fixation. So hernias um, can do several things. They can either be reducible, which means you can get them back in, which means you're okay, it's not a medical emergency, and if it's easily reducible, then you don't need to worry about it. You can deal with that in an elective setting. And um, larger hernias, um, it's a bit of an odd way of thinking about it, but larger hernias have larger defects, which means it's usually easier to reduce them. It's the smaller hernias which tend to become irreducible. So irreducible means that even if you try maneuvers to bring it back in, you're not able to do so. And then the other things it can do is obstruct. So if you have the whole content of a bowel going through it, you can get a knuckle of bowel caught in it, and these can obstruct. And um, surgical adhesions and hernias make up the mainstay of causes of obstruction um, in the Western world. And then if the blood supply is uh, compromised, it can strangulate, so you get uh, obstruction and pain, and you can also get um, changes in, so the lactate will accumulate as um, you have an area of necrotic bowel, and if you have necrotic bowel, the bowel wall will weaken, it can die, and then it can perforate, and then you're left with uh, fecal peritonitis, and this is obviously uh, a surgical emergency. But on the mainstay, the majority of hernias are reducible and uh, very few of them, less than 2%, will go on to, to become irreducible, obstruct, strangulate, or perforate, which is why uh, the mainstays sometimes are not uh, treated aggressively.